My name is Jared Nurse. I'm Devin Cha. I'm Cassie Bell. And we study dissolved oxygen and temperature in the rivers of Aspen. So what we want you to take away from today's presentation is the importance. So why is dissolved oxygen and temperature important? The local status, so what's the status in the Aspen area, and the possible solutions. So what can we do to make it better? <laughs> so first, temperature. What is it? Temperature is the degree of heat or cold in the water measured on a definitive scale. The causes of the temperature, there are many different things. It can be location, elevation, groundwater inflow, temperature of the air. And it affects mainly biodiversity, which we'll talk about in a second. It's monitored by two different methods, the most expensive of which is sensors, and the much cheaper version is a simple thermometer. So why does temperature matter to biodiversity? We have two graphs here showing what species live at certain temperatures and the tolerant and optimal temperatures for the stages of the trout's life. The hotter the water is, the less animals can live there and the less organisms can survive. It also causes more fish diseases and our biodiversity can suffer. So the colder the water is, the more species we can have and the better our ecosystem is. Alright, dissolved oxygen is the amount of non-compound oxygen in a body of water. Some causes are biological activity, elevation, velocity, and temperature. Temperature really affects the solubility, which is how much oxygen can go into the water. Cold water is more oxygen, warm water is less oxygen. It can get into the river by diffusion and photosynthesis in aquatic plants. Some effects are dead water, which means there's too little oxygen in the water to support life. Cellular respiration, oxygen is part of the equation. Biodiversity, animals breathe oxygen and the monitoring, there is three ways to monitor dissolved oxygen. There's tiration, chlorometric, and meter sensors. Sensors are just, you put it in the water and it tells you. Chlorometric is the dyes. Have, if the dye is dark, that means you have a lot of oxygen. And tiration is mixing chemicals together to get a chemical reaction. So what are the important things? Well, dissolved oxygen temperature can affect biological and chemical processes. Dissolved oxygen speeds up cellular respiration so that the fish can breathe and survive in the water. It also affects biodiversity because without the oxygen, the fish can't breathe. The temperature affects biodiversity and because it causes fish diseases when it's too hot and fish can't live there. The optimal temperature for most fish is lower than it is, lower than it is right now. So this is a graph of the relationship between dissolved oxygen and temperature in the Castle Creek River. It was taken by the River Watch in the Castle Creek River. Um, and so you can see that when the dissolved oxygen is high, the temperature is low. So this right here would be a point that is super optimal for our rivers because we want the temperature to be lower and we want the dissolved oxygen to be higher because it's more optimal for the organisms in the water. Um, so this graph was not over time, it's simply just a relationship. This right here is the trend line, and so the trend line is the most, the most accurate average of what our relationship between dissolved oxygen and temperature is in the Castle Creek River. So what can we do? First of all, climate change. So the hotter the temperature outside, the hotter the water. So if we drive less, don't litter, recycle, and do other little things, it'll help keep our rivers cool. So you guys have all probably heard of the ice caps melting. Well, that, that's because the air outside is getting hotter because of greenhouse gases. And so that climate change is affecting the whole world, but it's also affecting us when it comes to our rivers because we want the water to be colder. Um, so the less water makes the water hotter. So the less water in our rivers means our water will be hotter because the sun can hit all parts of the river. And so if we had more water, the heat would only hit the top. And so if we sent a little less water to the east of Colorado and found other ways to keep water in our rivers, they would stay cold and optimal. Um, the worst period for our rivers are July, August, and September, because that's 